I'm joined now by Professor Helen O'Sullivan, who's Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Provost of the University of Chester and Chair of Alt. Helen, welcome. Why is digital technology so important in the education sector? Well, because it provides us with an opportunity to give students really high quality learning resources. And also it gives them the opportunity to collaborate, communicate and learn wherever they find themselves. So we can have students all over the globe who are able to collaborate and, and work together on a project or, or what have you. And it opens up opportunities, therefore, for students who wouldn't have ordinarily had that opportunity. Really importantly, it gives students a lot of flexibility. So students are increasingly having to balance paid employment, caring responsibilities, but also students who are studying full time on things like healthcare professions. They're spending all day in work placements or, um, you know, in professional placements and having that flexibility to review materials, to collaborate, to communicate with their tutors uh, in a digital environment is really, really beneficial for them. The pandemic obviously saw you undertake a huge shift in how you operate. How did your sector respond to that? How have you managed through this time? Well, in many ways, the sector was prepared for the digital transformation that, that went ahead. I mean, most universities and, and parts of the education sector already had digital strategies. They already had courses that were completely online and they were already well set up for blended learning. We're hearing a lot about blended learning now, but this was really widespread before in the sector. But of course, nobody was really prepared for the pandemic and we had to completely change our business models almost overnight. And learning technologists suddenly found themselves in the real heart of universities having to make decisions about how to use technology, how to direct learning, how to, uh, to change assessment so that students were still able to study and staff were still able to provide those learning opportunities for students. And moving on now, how is the sector moving past crisis provision? Well, I think there'll be a, a transition year or two where we start to look at what we've learned from that emergency remote learning, look at the lessons and think about how to move forward. And of course, the pandemic isn't going to be just suddenly over one day. It's going to be a very gradual transition. This post pandemic period will probably last for, to, for a couple of years. So I think um, consolidating what we've done, really talking to our students and trying to understand what it is about what we've done that they really like, but then looking forward to how we can really embed that into our business models into the future so that it becomes much more um, you know, commonplace, it becomes much more comfortable and that our staff are more confident and comfortable with some of the changes that have taken place. And Helen, how do you at all support learning technologists? Well, in several ways. Uh, first and foremost, we provide a network, um, a community of practice and of collaboration um, so that colleagues can share their experiences, share their good practice and really support each other. Secondly, it provides um, a, an opportunity for learning technologies to be recognised. So we've got a framework of professional recognition and this really supports them in their personal and professional development. And then I suppose finally, we provide, um, we are advocates in the sector for learning technologists and learning technology and all the value that it brings to institutions and to, to our students. And finally, Helen, what does the future look like? There's no doubt that technology is really going to disrupt the higher education sector. We're going to have um, much more involvement of things like virtual reality. Improved simulation is going to really revolutionise how we train healthcare professionals, engineers, scientists and other um, uh, parts of the sector as well. And I think um, the personalised learning that we've heard a lot about will finally come into fruition. Using things like um, AI, we'll be able to give students a personalised experience, helping them develop their own strengths, helping them identify their weaknesses and, um, and really engaging with the learning material in a way that, that suits them personally. An exciting future to look forward to. Professor Helen O'Sullivan, many thanks it for joining really us today. Thank you. Thank you.